Hello, everyone. My name is Amir Armand. I'm the president of Carry Solutions. I am a CMMC provisional assessor and instructor. We have Jill Wright, who is also a CMMC provisional assessor and instructor. In fact, Jill was the class one or two before me, I think. I was so jealous. I was super jealous. <laughs> Anyways. So what what's the topic today? Um, session termination. Session termination. So these are our level two requirements. Seems to be level two requirements, right? Um, are you talking about the difference? So there's two requirements that talk about session termination, right? One. Yep. That's for user sessions, and then one is for network sessions. Yep. Okay. What, what's what's the problem? Um, I think usually a lot of companies are like, "Why am I seeing this again?" Like they don't get the difference, you know. So yeah. Okay. Uh, well, let's see if. If I can explain that. All right, do you see my screen? I do. OK, so this is the CMC level two assessment guide. And I'm going to search for. User session, let's see if we can find user session. Yep. OK, so. This is the first requirement relating to session termination. And it's in the access control family, AC family, which is important because the other one is in the systems and communication protection family, which is a different family, different. a different focus, right? So access control is around accounts and permissions and users when you connect, connect systems right. together and users, right? And then the SC family the systems and communication protection family is very high tech. Uh, it's like network engineer stuff. Firewalls. Um, you know, configuration settings, encryption. Uh, so they're two very different focuses, but they've got kind of the same requirement in both families. And um, the key to understanding the difference is really by what family they're in. So. This one says terminate automatically a user session after a defined condition. Great. So a lot of people start thinking, do I like how do I how do I do this? Right. Well, the first key is you need to define a condition that the that the user session will be terminated. Um, People tend to go wrong on this because they they don't really understand this requirement. Uh, and they think, oh, what I need to do is set all of the sessions to terminate after 12 hours. I can say that's a condition. Or reboot all the computers every night, right? And that's not actually what this is going for. That That will work. That will actually work. Like, you will terminate the user session if you reboot the computer. Yep. Um, most of the time, I'd say, but this is not actually talking about that. Uh, what this is talking about is whether your logout command works, whether your disable the account command works. Okay, so you you have logged into a server. You have established a user session, right? Your account is a user session. And the server needs to not leave that session open for anybody to connect to when you when you log out. So it's it's real simple. And the awesome thing is pretty much every system does this by default, right? So you just need to look up how your system does it and write down how your system does it. 
this is a server side thing. Uh, so log out command, um, disable the Save account, it. reset the password, uh, expire session keys. So that's that's a a command that you can see in some clouds that if you've got uh, cookies, right, and it will automatically let you log back in or reconnect to the cloud, you can set a command that will make the user have to log in manually again to reestablish it. And that's really all that is. Like, this is actually super easy and super simple. Much easier than than people think it is usually. Yep, yep. Um, the, the pro tip is don't define a condition that doesn't work. Right. So your assessor is probably going to read your SSP and you're going to, your SSP is going to say, you know, the way we define this is by using the logout command. Well, if when you click the logout command, your computer automatically re-signs in using the cookies, that's not a great condition to use because the assessor is going to be like, why are you still logged in? Right. Right. So pick something that really works that when you do that thing, such as disabling the account, it's very obvious that it will kick out the the session, that user session. Um, OK, so the other Why one. Why you should test things before an assessor comes. Yes. Just just make sure. This is definitely a testable practice. Um, and it doesn't need to be on a timeline. It, it's just you do. It can be a manual activity that you perform. It doesn't need to be uh, the the condition does not need to be automatic. The termination needs to occur after the condition. Right. The, the condition can be a manual activity. Uh, OK, the next one is in the SC domain. Let me see if I can. Oh, that's not going to work. Um, <laughs> well, that's not going to work either. OK, uh, terminate. Session, maybe network. Um, nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me find the SC area. Uh, OK, level two SC practices, we're getting there. Oh, my goodness. There's like 20 in the SC there, domain. There's a lot. Sorry, guys. Uh, not split telling, that's a whole different topic. There we go. That's it. All right, 3.13.9, terminate network connections at the end of the sessions or after a defined period of inactivity. So very similar, but because this is in the SC domain, I know that we're looking at technical solutions for this. Um, so. A period of inactivity to terminate network connections. OK, what's a network connection? So when you look at how networks work and IPv4 works, every computer that's a server, every computer pretty much, will have open listening ports on it. Um, and this is risky, but let me see if I can open up PowerShell. Uh, Just don't terminate at... teams. <laughs> Let me see if I can make this bigger. OK, so on Windows, the netstat-a command. Yeah, now you guys know my computer name. Hopefully that's not a vulnerability. Uh, the netstat-a command shows active network connections which is both listening and established. So 
on my computer, because this is a Windows computer, I've got these 135 and 443 ports listening, uh, which are related to file protocols and, you know, getting managed by a domain controller. Um, and I've got some other stuff, which I don't know off the top of my hand, my head, but some of them are like Teams, some other apps. Now, over here, the established are when we actually have a connection made. Um, and these established are what are supposed to close to terminate when you're done with them. Uh, so if you really want to dig into this, which is good if you're preparing, if you're an assessor, this is probably a little bit too much to do. You can actually run this command. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> run this command, open up a session to like a website or open up a session to a server, close the session, and then time how long it takes for that session to close. Uh, and this is the the session is generally going to be um, controlled by your firewall. So it could be a corporate firewall or it could be a firewall on the device where you set, hey, this is how long you wait before you terminate an idle session. And these are the sessions that we're talking about. Uh, so so very, assessors mm -hmm. are looking at settings on the firewall. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, when assessors look at this, they want to see uh, how you've configured your firewall, either the corporate firewall or the firewall on the device, and how long you've set it to wait before it, it closes the session. It's very common to see five minutes, 300 seconds. Um, but typically, a report showing that that's configured is how we would be verifying that it's done. We're not going to try Do and this. look at, <laughs> yeah, port 61,702 and see what happens when you close Teams or your website right. connection. Uh, but this is what's actually happening on the IPv4 level that it's it's actually trying to talk to here. Um, so end of the sessions means you close your website, you exit the Teams meeting, whatever. Defined period of inactivity could mean, again, you close the website, right? The computer doesn't know that you close Chrome. Well, the computer knows, but your NetStat doesn't. Like your, your network layer does not know that you close Chrome. That's a different layer of the OSC, OSI model. Um, so it's generally going to close those sessions based on inactivity rather than formally ending the session. Uh, though some apps may be intelligent enough to go into your network and actually close the port. Uh, so fun fun times. Any any other questions on this topic, Jill? Nope. All right. Cool. Cool.